All right, thanks for watching. And now let's use the coordinate method to solve the wave equation UTT equals c squared dx. And the advantage you'll see is that it is more elegant, but the disadvantage is you need to know what coordinates to choose. That's it, let's apply this. So let's first define our coordinates. So here, let z be x minus ct, and then w be x plus ct. Now, how did we find those coordinates? Sort of by cheating, because we do know from the factoring method that the general solution is f of x minus ct plus g of x plus ct. where we have our variables x minus ct and x plus ct appearing. So it's natural to choose those. But even if you didn't know what the solution looks like, you could also just look at simulations and see that our waves are moving to the left and to the right. And moving to the left and to the right is precisely represented by those coordinates, x minus ct and x plus ct, just like for the transfer equation. All right, once we have our coordinates Z and W, the next step now is to write our PDE, UTT equals C squared UXX, in terms of Z and W. Of Z and W. And in order to do this, we need to write all our partial derivatives in terms of z and w, and therefore use the chain rule. And for this, remember the following chain rule diagram, which we'll use several times today. So u is a function of z and w, and z is a function of x and e. Very good. So now let's do it. Well, as I said, first things first, let's calculate u, x, and u, t in terms of our new variables. So ux is du over dx. And then literally follow the chains. So it's du over dz times dz over dx, and then du over dw times dw over dx. So du over dz, dz over dx, plus du over dw, dw over dx. And now, d over dz, it's uz, dz over dx, so it's x minus ct with respect to x, this becomes uw, and then x plus ct with respect to x. So in the end, we're just left with uz times 1 plus uw times 1, so just uz plus uw. So let's keep that in mind. Let me write this here. So ux is in fact uz plus uw. And what do we want to do now? We want to calculate ut. Here you follow the other chain. So it's uz over du over dz times dz over dt, and then du over dw times dw over dt. So let's do that now. So ut. Once again, du over dt, and that becomes du over dz, dz over dt, plus du over dw, dw over dz. And well, almost exactly the same. So this is uz, and that becomes x minus ct, with respect to t, and then uw, and then x plus ct, with respect to t. So here we get an extra minus c, because of the chain rule, and here we get an extra c as well, and so in the end we get minus c uz plus c uw. 
So let's record that as well. So ut is minus c uz plus c uz. Okay, that was for the first order partial derivatives. And now let's move on to the second order ones. And well, the good news is it's almost the same thing. So it's the same chain rule diagram. So let's do uxx. Well, that is uxx. Okay, great. Which is dux over dx. And now we just follow the same chain rule diagram again. So this becomes dux over dz, dz over dx, and then plus dux over dw, and then dw over dx. And now to calculate this, so dux over dz, remember ux is uz plus uw. So this is really the same thing as uz plus uw. Now with respect to z, z is x minus ct with respect to x. And then same thing here, uz plus uw with respect to w and then x plus ct with respect to x. So in the end, what do we get? So this becomes uzz plus uwz times 1, so we ignore that, and then plus uzw plus uww, and then times 1. And now, here's a very nice thing. We do have those mixed partial derivatives. So for our purposes, those are equal by what's called Clairaut's theorem. So Clairaut's theorem says, if u is nice enough, then those mixed partial derivatives are equal. And so in the end, we get uzz plus 2 uzw plus uw. So that is a uxx. Okay, so in this case, once again, same spiel. So utt is dut over dt. And once again, follow the chain rule diagram. So it becomes d ut over dz, dz over dt plus d u t over d w, d w over d t. And well, once again, you can plug everything in. So we get minus c u z plus c u w with respect to z and then x minus ct with respect to t, and then plus minus cuz plus cuw with respect to w, x minus ct, or x plus ct with respect to t. And then, once again, this is a differentiation party, so what we end up getting is minus c uzz and then plus c uwz times minus c and then plus minus c uzw plus c uww times c. And if you expand this out, you end up getting, I believe, c squared uzz minus c squared uwz and then minus c squared uzw and then plus c squared uw which if you want you can simplify so, so i just rewrote this for clarity and now step three okay, we have our pde 
UTT is C squared UXX. And now all we need to do is plug in those formulas. So we have C squared UZZ minus 2 UZW plus UWW equals C squared UZZ plus 2 UZW plus UWW. And first of all, notice the C squares cancels out. Your C is a positive number. And then what we end up getting is UZZ minus 2 UZW plus UWW equals UZZ plus 2 UZW plus UWW. And now there is a cancellation party and you're all invited because the UZZs cancel out and the UWWs cancel out. So what we end up getting is minus 2 UZW equals 2 UZW. So 4 UZW equals 0. And so in the end, we're left with a much simpler PDE, which is UZW equals 0. So the point is, this is simpler. So just like you saw in calculus, if you do it correctly, it will simplify your integral. And here, if you do coordinate methods correctly, it will simplify your PDE. And now we can actually solve it. Okay. So now let's solve. Solve uzw equals zero. And in fact, this was one of our simple PDEs that we covered at the beginning of the course. And in fact, it's exactly like the PDE uxy equals zero. And in fact, same thing, but just with those different variables. So let me just remind you how to solve it. This is the same thing as uzw equals zero. So in other words, uz, it does not depend of w, so it's purely a function of z. So it's f of z, again, because it's constant with w. With w. And now, to get to u, we integrate. So integral of f of z dz which is the antiderivative of f. So capital F of z. And plus a constant, but the constant is with respect to z. So it is really a function of w. So g of w, so constant with z. And why did I write capital G instead of lowercase z? Just to be pretty, because we already have capital F, so why not just add capital G? And then last but not least, so this is in terms of Z and W, so we just need to write this in terms of our original variables. And in the end, what we get is U of XT. It's F of Z, where Z was X minus CT, and then G of W, which is G of X plus CT. And lo and behold, we finally get our wave equation solution. Which once again is cool because this models a wave going to the right and this models a wave going to the left. So this is saying any wave is just the superposition of the two, which is kind of neat. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.